It's been a good year for the rains, and the mighty Zambezi is flowing powerfully, bringing water to the plains of southern Africa. But all is not quiet on these gentle riverbanks. That's better. And do it hard. Don't just put it in weekly. Put it in and use some bicep. Get that boat going straight. This is not difficult. Paul Connolly runs a tourism business here. Today, guiding 63 managers from Norwich Union on an away day through the beautiful and occasionally treacherous waters under the watchful eye of some puzzled locals. The business is doing well, but even though Paul continues to live in Zimbabwe, he's relocated all his work across the river to Zambia because of the collapse in his country. What makes me angry is the mere idea that one person, basically, in 2000, in the, in, the, in, in, in the 21st century, can have the power to destroy what was without doubt the breadbasket of Africa, the, 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 the jewel of Africa, to take it to what it's got now, to what it's got to now. That is something I can't get my head around. The tourists used to flock to Zimbabwe, but these days they and their dollars give Robert Mugabe's fiefdom a wide berth. Because of repressive laws, journalists are rarely allowed to report freely, so we entered posing as tourists to gauge the mood of the country. The town of Victoria Falls only exists because of tourism, and its quaint charm is still obvious, if a little bedraggled. The rare sight of a foreigner here brings out the hawkers in numbers, keen to make a sale, to stay afloat in difficult times. So everywhere we go, we are swamped by people. Excuse me. Yeah, this one this okay. is okay. This is okay. Ten dollar for these two. Yeah, ten years. Hard currency is in short supply in Zimbabwe. No, sir. No, that's it. And when the hawkers get too much, there's some relief, even if it comes from an unexpected source. I'm here in Victoria Falls, and everywhere I go, I'm followed by this man here. He's from the police service. But there's nothing sinister about it. He's actually here for my protection. The concern they have is that tourists are constantly being uh, descended on by beggars and by hawkers, and he's here to look after me. Even up to very recently, this casino was a buzzing place where tourists and wealthy locals rubbed shoulders as they frittered away their money. Now the most you can bet is a measly few cents. The sport has gone out of it. The crazy numbers Zimbabweans have to deal with make even the simplest transaction confusing. Hey, how much are you betting? I, I think it's 10 million. Well, 20, 10 million per chip, but 20 million I was, I, was, I was betting. How much is that? 20 million, is it million dollar? Well, we don't know, how, what is the dollar today? 30 million? 20 million, something like this. Mm -hmm. A soft drink at this bar now costs 50 million Zimbabwean dollars. In the old days, you'd have bought half the town with that. But now hyperinflation has done its work, and it's a pittance. Those impoverished in Mugabe, Zimbabwe, have an escape route. This is the way most have left, a hair-raising journey through the bush, often to an unknown future at low wages in South Africa. Landlocked Zimbabwe has hemorrhaged its people to all its neighbours. It's not just the poor who have left. Crossing the river Chobe into Botswana, one finds an African country which is stable and prosperous. It's here that many skilled Zimbabweans have found a home. The ferry is a bit rudimentary, but it's effective and trade is brisk. This exile runs a five-star lodge on the river, busy all year round, as tourists opt for the predictability and the charms of Botswana rather than the chaos in the Zimbabwe that he left behind.
I was running a small lodge um, and we took quite a bit of uh, you know the the brand um, that's that's made that that's what made me to you know look outside and uh, move out um, and I think I did that at the right time because it was still relatively easy then to come through into a country like Botswana in terms of um, the relevant documents, uh, your work permits, resident permits, at that particular stage it was easy. So how quickly do you think Zimbabwe could see its way out of this and, and how, how does it get out? Obviously the, the, the main key factor here is uh, you know, maybe a political change if you want to call it that way because um, I, I personally believe we won't go anywhere without that, that key change um, so that even the international community can can also see that there has been change and people are willing to come back again to invest and all that. There are many opportunities for highly skilled Zimbabweans, like this doctor. Did you have options of which country to go to? Yes, I had one or two options, and uh, options in Europe and also options in Southern Africa here. But you decided to come here? Yes. And why, why here? It's near a home, it's an African country. I'm more comfortable here with Africans than in Europe or any other place. You meet um, other Zimbabweans here, um, fellow professionals. What do you talk about? 90% of the time we're talking about home. That's, that's mostly if you meet some engineer, if you meet an accountant, if you meet a bank, bank manager or whatever. Most of these professionals talk about home. Do you feel you're bothering the neighbouring countries? Because it's not just the professionals who come here. Every type of Zimbabwean has fled, haven't they? They have fled. We've got a lot of people who are doing a lot of and wanted things around here, so we are really flooding the other countries and we are bidding, to be realistic with you, in as much as they are trying to accommodate us, but uh, there, are, uh, there are some of us who are very helpful, who are also helping the other neighbouring countries, but some of us are really a nuisance around here. Every crisis throws up its opportunists, informal traders who work the system at the border crossings, wheeling and dealing, dodging the customs officials and the police. Maxwell was a teacher in Zimbabwe, but he's had a career change, and he now works as a free market trader. You are buying things in Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah, I'm buying. Cheap. Yeah, in Zimbabwe, I'll be buying things in Zimbabwe. That side, like for for example, I'll be buying uh, chibuku. They call it chibuku, the African traditional beer. I'll be buying it from that side for only seven million. When I come here, if I sell it, let's say, for about five pin, which is 5,000 kwacha, that's a lot of money. If I convert it to Zim dollar, somewhere around 25 million. So you're making three times what you paid yeah, for it? three times for, for that price. I was, I'm, I'm getting a lot. I'm not complaining. But even as he profits from the country's misfortune, Maxwell still thinks change is essential. Yeah, the, the problem is all coming from that Mugabe. If only if he, if he goes away, if he, he steps down, things are going to be okay in Zimbabwe. But Mugabe shows no sign of wanting to go. In his 28 years at the helm since Zimbabwe's independence, he's developed a liking for power. As we weren't able to attend any political rallies, a cameraman filmed on our behalf. In his home region of Zwimba, he draws a decent, enthusiastic crowd. At times he appears dynamic and engaged, the liberation leader determined to stay in office. At others he appears distant, distracted, a lonely figure. And his message, that hasn't changed. It's all about fighting the old colonial master. You keep your England and let us keep our Zimbabwe. Fair, fair. With few weapons left in his armory, he's now threatening to confiscate what's left of the foreign-owned industry here. Your sanctions will in future demand reciprocation from us. And when we reciprocate, we will hit your businesses here. We wanted to put some questions to President Mugabe about the perilous state of the country but his days of facilitating the foreign media seem to be over, and his government-funded roadshow moves on. However, his veteran spokesman was on hand to give the party line. We are very confident uh, 
that uh, the uh, election uh, uh, is going to be uh, uh, in our, the result will be in our favor. We have uh, uh, worked very hard, not only in the last few months, but uh, in the last 29 years since we attained independence. We have been working uh, hard to build... The spokesman station. trots out the same rhetoric. Again, nothing new uh, or fresh for the electorate have, here. Uh, it's hard to believe that neither Mugabe nor his spokesman are addressing the real crisis in the country. And we are uh, going to be victorious on, uh, uh, the, on the 29th. All around, the failure of key policies is obvious. Of course, land has always been the key issue here in Zimbabwe, and that's where Robert Mugabe has come unstuck. The redistribution policy was meant to take land from the few white farmers and give it to the many black Zimbabweans. But it hasn't worked out like that. Most of the farms went to cronies of Robert Mugabe or to the so-called war veterans, who haven't had the skills, the cash, or indeed the will in many cases, to develop it. And everyone has been impoverished as a result of the process. More than half the country lives on food handouts. In the past, Robert Mugabe could count on patronage and on manipulation to win elections. But that's no longer an option now that the economy is in a collapsed state. And many people here say that he's going to have to engage in a massive rigging operation to win it this time. <laughs> In the meantime, there's the small business of suppressing dissent. This is the funeral of Marilyn Moyo, who played her own part in the Liberation War. She was a member of the organization Women of Zimbabwe Arise, WOZA. They're a non-political action group that campaigns for women's rights. Police snatched Marilyn Moyo from her sickbed late at night for interrogation. It was an ordeal from which she never recovered. We know that there are orders that there was a leadership should be abducted and killed. And so whenever we march, we know the risk we are taking. We are putting our life directly in the hands of, of chance as to whether that will be the day we are abducted and killed. But I think there is an element within the, the defense forces of, of police officers, of the army, of uh, the central intelligence organizations who have just had enough. They, for all intents and purposes, are ordinary people trying to pay their school fees, trying to afford a loaf of bread on their table and feed their families. And so when they see people like us, genuine human rights defenders on the street, demanding social justice, I think they have to find some ways to, to allow us the space to work. And they can do that because we are not a political party. Driving around Matabili land, one is struck by how quiet and lonely it appears. But the facade of calm hides a multitude of problems, not least how the ruling party is pressurizing the people. The Dirty Tricks Brigade are at work. We're just crossing from Zimbabwe into Zambia. We were over in Vic Falls on the Zimbabwe side to interview Morgan Changarai, the main leader of the opposition party. We just got word that he's been arrested and we've been told we have to cross the border, get out of Zimbabwe quick. Some days later, our cameras finally caught up with Morgan Changarai. His party says his brief detention was part of a government vendetta against him. Despite the difficulties during the campaign, the MDC leader has bounced back in a big way. We need the transformation of the system that Mugabe has implemented over the last 30 years. That is the only way in which this country can move forward. Chinja! My dear! Any thought that the election could be stolen from them this time is unacceptable to Changarai. There is an overwhelming surge uh, for change in this country. I will not lose if it is free and fair. Mugabe would have stolen from it. Like previously, to me this is a struggle. Until that struggle's goals have been achieved, I have a role to play. But there's a very tricky problem here. Even if the election were free and fair, and even if he won, both big ifs, would Morgan Changarai ever be allowed to take office? 
The head of the army and the police are reported to have said that they wouldn't accept the former trade unionist as president. I'm not elected by the army. I'm elected by the people of Zimbabwe. And I will respect the verdict of the people of Zimbabwe. I hope that those institutions are so national in character and professional in character that they respect civilian authority, deriving from the people's mandate. That's my approach. Supporting the opposition in Zimbabwe can be bad for your health. The intimidation of those opposed to Robert Mugabe continues apace. At a students' rally some weeks ago, these organisers were abducted and tortured. And we were in this dark room and they started assaulting us and um, forcing us to chant some PF slogans and also they were forcing us to chew and to eat the placards that we were uh, using. Eat protest. the placards that you brought yeah. to the demonstration? Yeah, because they, uh, they first forced us to read them and to explain and then they forced us to eat them. Uh, they started giving us claps uh, in the face and uh, also at the back and uh, under, 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 under our feet. Yeah. At the bottom of your At feet. the bottom, yeah. And that's very painful? Yeah, that, uh, that was very painful. They're actually saying, we'll, we'll kill you, those anti-riot police guys. So they took me, 15 of them, then they took me to a secluded place. Uh, they really thrashed me for about a good two hours. So it's quite horrific, I can't even... I don't like uh, telling about this. You don't like mm. to remember? Yeah, yeah, I don't like to remember it. It was, it was that traumatic for you? Yeah, it was traumatic. I'm still traumatized up now. As a student leader, I have to be in the forefront to show others that I am really in the struggle because we have to remove this dictatorship we are suffering in this country. But perhaps the most potent challenge to Robert Mugabe has come from within ZANU-PF. Simba Makoni, a former finance minister, was a member of the Politburo before resigning to launch his own presidential bid. Makoni has teamed up with the other MDC faction and is trying to make his appeal as broad as possible. This is not the ruling party re-emerging by another name. We will participate with Zimbabweans from the widest cross-section of constituencies. There are no positions earmarked for individuals, but there are roles for all Zimbabweans who can contribute to the solution of our country's problems. Both the main presidential challengers have serious concerns over the conduct of the poll and the independence of the election commission, known as ZEC. We haven't seen the final voters roll. It's a matter that is concerning us a lot. But we are working with ZEC in cooperation with other political organizations in this election to ensure that the integrity of the voters' role in the first instance is guaranteed and then the integrity of the whole electoral process, from the vote casting to the vote counting to the vote announcement, that they are above board. Watching Zimbabwean state television, you could be forgiven for thinking that there's no contest at all. State control media has refused to carry adverts for Simba Makoni, a sign perhaps of the impact he's having. Politics here in Zimbabwe are as extreme and as complex as they've ever been. Regardless of the official outcome of this election, Makoni's challenge has undermined Robert Mugabe's iron grip on power. And many here believe it's the beginning of the end for Robert Mugabe. Of the presidential hopefuls, Simba Makoni has picked up some heavyweight support from disillusioned war veterans. We have decided we are taking the step we are taking no matter what the consequences are. Even if they're dangerous consequences for Even you? if they're dangerous consequences, we don't mind. It's got to be done for the sake of Zimbabwe. Are you a party? Are you a movement? Are you a few people? What are you exactly? We have no structure. It's voluntary people from ZANU-PF, from other parties, getting together and saying, let's rescue the situation. Is there resistance, do you think, within the military to your project? We don't intend and we will not go and talk to the military about this project. We leave it to their consciences to examine 
as to what they think we are doing. If it is right, if it is wrong, we leave it to them to decide on that as individuals. Are you worried about them? We're not, not at all. Are you worried about what President Mugabe might do because he said some pretty direct things about Mr. McConey? We're not worried, not at all. We've said old age has got its own flaws. The older you become, the looser your language becomes. And uh, in our tradition, an old man, even if he throws an insult at you, you don't answer back and will not answer back. <laughs> So the stage is set for a bruising contest. At stake, not just a change of leadership or policy, but the very survival of a strategically important African country. Nature has been kind this year. The rains were generous and the rivers are flowing freely. It could be a great year for Zimbabwe in the long struggle since independence. But so much in this journey is unknown. The twists and turns could lead the country in a variety of directions. If Mugabe wins, the opposition may challenge that on the streets. If the other side triumphs, the security forces could unleash their might, plunging the country into confrontation and ever closer to being a failed state. <laughs>